Hi guys, this is uh, an update on my Friday video. As of uh, last Saturday now, on the 5th of March 2022, the Charities Commission has removed all communications from uh, the register, their register as individual charities. Now, when I did the video last Friday, the Charities Commission website showed all congregations accounts as overdue by 32 days and the following day on Saturday all congregations showed up as removed uh, charities from the register so today if you go today on their website if you go today on your browser and you type in Jehovah's Witnesses trustees and then the name of your congregation the link of your local charity is there on Google or whatever browser you're using but the information when you click on the information on the Charities Commission's website has disappeared along with the information about your elders which elders were the trustees of that charity see what this is the final act of a two-year plan that uh, began back in 2019 and its sole purpose was the complete takeover of all Kingdom Hall's properties located in England Scotland and Wales so in a letter uh, dated back in the on the 8th of 2019 the London based Kingdom Hall Trust announced that all UK congregations will dissolve and their status as individual tar charities will come to an end and they will effectively become branches of the Kingdom Hall Trust now the Kingdom Hall Trust is a Jehovah's Witnesses legal corporation and it goes as far back as 1939 it was established here in London as a company of the Kingdom Witnesses now on the June 30th 1978 it was officially registered as a charity in the UK and in 1994 the name was changed to the Kingdom Hall Trust now, one of the Kingdom Hall Trust was already engaged in this acquisition of property used by Jehovah's Witnesses church members. The latest directive of 2019 proposed that all UK branch congregations relinquish their individual charity status and operate under the blanket control of the Kingdom Hall Trust charity. Now, at that time, Five documents were leaked, including a private letter to all elders, a separate letter to be read to the congregations, and an FAQ document explaining the dissolution, the dissolution of congregation charities. And I will include all these documents on my link that I have on my website. The link is below this video. So also included are the uh, were these pre-formatted meeting minutes and congregation resolutions to be filled out, resolved and returned to the Kingdom Hall Trust. So that happened back in 2019. So according to the letter presented to the individual congregations, the UK Charity Commission approved the merging of all UK congregations into the Kingdom Hall Trust with the premise that all communications, the promise that all communications in the United Kingdom agree to these changes. Now, the language used at the time was very cleverly drafted and it was suggested that the merger was really optional, but it wasn't. So your charity, basically what they were saying, your charity is now being invited to take part in this process and merge with the Kingdom Hall Trust. Next week, a resolution will be put to all published, published, baptized members of your congregation so that you can decide whether or not to go along with this proposal. So it was supposedly they had the, the option of choice, but this carefully crafted language from the Watchtower. Now, it may be of interest to the Charity Commission, whenever, if they ever watch any of these videos, that this compliance to the directive is not optional. As we all know, all resolutions placed before the communication members from the Jehovah's Witnesses governing entities or the governing body are passed without contest, right? And we know that. Now, 
financial implications on this move. While the Kingdom Hall Trust directors stated that these changes were for purposes of simplification, the leaked documents suggested the, that permanent control of property and finances were the actual and true motivation behind this change. So the November 2019 letter to the congregation members had this to say, however, because elders would long, no longer serve as trustees, your local donations would be administered by Kingdom Hall Trust as part of this general funds. This could mean that the trustees decide to use your donations to support Kingdom Hall work elsewhere in our branch territory and throughout the world to meet the needs of our brothers and sisters. And this, they were saying, was in harmony with uh, this famous verse they use all the time about the equalizing uh, uh, explained at 2 Corinthians 8, 14, where it says that by means of an equalizing, your surplus at the present time might offset the, their need. Uh, it's this famous verse that they always use whenever they're trying to get money out of you. So uh, the, they use this kind of um, language to describe the actual takeover. Okay. Now, while witnesses have been, been always able to donate funds to the worldwide work, the latest, this latest directive appeared to give the Kingdom Hall Trust the ability to extract funds normally, marked for local use only, and allocate them for use by Jehovah's Witnesses leadership anywhere, anywhere else in the world they wanted. Now, this 2019 document issued from London revealed much more than mere transfer of charity. It wasn't, it wasn't just a transfer to the Charities Commission responsibilities, if you like. They clearly stated that individual congregations no longer owned or control their own properties, many of which have been in operation for more than 100 years. So they go back all the way back in time, 100 years. The London branch office of um, Jehovah's Witnesses opened in 1900, if you go back in history. And at the time, it had the supervision of a, less than a dozen of congregations. Now, according to the witnesses' latest metric, I think the number of the congregations here in the UK is something like in the region of 15 or 1600 congregations. Now, following this money heist, uh, they were concerned amongst critics of Jehovah's Witnesses that this surplus funds basically were siphoned, as I said last week, from various sources and they were sent to different directions. And at the time, they were sent also to the German branch uh, headquarters in Salters. So the uh, British-based International Bible Students Association, which the abbreviation is IBSA, is one of the sources. So the IBSA, which is a long-standing legal corporation formed by witnesses, way back in 1914 and continues to operate under the uh, direction of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. They are making this kind of transfers of money from the money that they've already taken from the congregations. Now, according to, there was a public financial statement you can find online, it was released in 2019. One of the stated objectives of IBSA is to financially assist legal entities of Jehovah's Witnesses with similar aims and objectives, both foreign and domestic. That's their aim. Now, in 2019, IBSA report grants payable the documents established links between a number of Jehovah's Witnesses owned corporations while revealing how cash grants were provided to witnesses institutions in five different continents. So this money has been spread now in five different continents. The largest 2018 financial transfer that was reported by IBSA was £8 million deposit 
to the German branch of the organization. So do you see how the money is moving around throughout this change of the Chartist Commission? Now, another one was 8.5 million uh, also transferred, cash transfer to the German headquarters. And in um, these transfers have now been documented throughout this last few years, been made all to all these different branches and directions throughout the uh, continent. So not only they are taking over the, the money from the, sorry, the charities from the local congregations, but also the money that they took away from them, they have dispersed in five different directions and God knows where the money is at the moment. So apart from that, um, you will find all the trustees have been removed now from all the other, every other congregation in the UK. Now, so you see there is this cloaking of secrecy uh, when, it, when it comes to money laundered under the vice of, of charity from the Charities Commission of the UK. So the new policies, they, I don't think also sit well with lifelong members of the Jehovah's Witnesses faith. Uh, who spent, I mean, they spent decades backing their local congregations with money, with free labor, and um, they don't see that as a straightforward and honest move from the society. While many will not doubt the transfer of property and finances to the JW headquarters, others will find and privately express their misgivings. So for this reason, it appears that the Kingdom Hall Trust Corporation has instructed congregation elders to spin this merger edict in a positive life, and they did that back in 2019. So the letter they sent back in 2019 instructed the elders to say that we encourage the elders to speak positively of the proposal and help publishers understand the changes being proposed. They were really looking to spin this in a very positive way. See, these changes came throughout this increasing scrutiny of Jehovah's Witnesses that, of course, stems from this controversial child abuse policies, okay? So, significant financial judgment against the religion have fueled concerns worldwide for example, in the United Kingdom, the independent inquiry into child sexual abuse was launched, as we know, in 2019 as well. And because of, as well, this happened because of the failure of religious organizations to protect children from abuse, including Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses maintained at the time, and they still maintain, that the practice of handling sexual abuse case internally, it is something their own that they want to, to deal with it internally. And, and although we know that they keep a secret database of child molesters, now while the movement of large sums of money by Jehovah's Witnesses is a measure to minimize legal accountability, it remains to be seen, okay? Now, what is the aftermath? I think in this post-pandemic environment where the Zoom meetings, whether you like it or not, they have been successful because many, if not all the congregation, has attended these meetings for over two years. This merger of all congregations under the Kingdom Hall Trust is too much of a good opportunity to miss for them to make money and to steal the congregations, the, so the Kingdom Halls, from the witnesses, the local witnesses, fast. There has been new accounting system in place since 2019, where Kingdom Hall Kingdom, Kingdom Hall's communications, if you like, only keep on hand three months operating expenses, and all the rest is sent to the Watchtower Society. So all is left is very little money to the congregation. According to the latest GP update, okay, number two for this year, 
the governing body can't wait to go back to the meetings. That's what they say. But believe me, it will be short-lived. People are living in droves, bad policies, terrible doctrines, and the weakest governing body in living memory. And that will empty kingdom halls faster and at an alarming rate. And I expect here in the United Kingdom, more merging of congregations, more kingdom, hall, kingdom halls put up for sale. And we will reach our thing here in the UK soon to the point where driving to the meetings will match distances that brothers and sisters in Canada and the US have to travel like 40 or 50 miles, which is on the for the United Kingdom. Now, the, the organization has proved many times over how little they care about their members and how they treasure balancing the books and ruthlessly moving forward. And I expect, I ex expect more Kingdom Hall closures now that the last hurdle of charitable status has been removed and the elders effectively lost overnight all the legal power over their kingdom halls. Now, there is another consideration apart from the monetary uh, value of this movement, okay? And the reason is privacy, okay? Now, in many cases, this merging is for privacy concern. If you remember back in 2014, the Charles Commission launched an investigation into Jehovah's Witnesses all to do with the Moston congregation here in Manchester. Now, it brought a lot of bad publicity at the time and probably caused some JWs to wake up. The Charities Commission website for its congregation contained a fair amount of uh, information about each registered congregation and all the names and the surnames of the elders, not just the financial information, but also the list of elders or trustees, as they are called. Removing registration stops all the prying eyes, all of these prying eyes. So it is a matter of privacy, if you like. So this is the situation as it stands at the moment. And you will find all this information below on my article.